Well, hi friends. Thanks for joining me. Um, yesterday I shared with you my new deep etch dies with spellbinders to make these really fun baskets, trays, um, ornaments. There's so many things you can make with them. And I, I think I haven't even touched on all the things you can make with them. Um, what they come with, this pack will come with one base. It's a hexagon and one um, curved top side panel. And this one will come with one square base um, and then two side panels. And then this is also can be used as a side panel as well for different. Um, and if you look at the video, my last video before this one, it'll show you all the different ways I've created using these different die shapes. But everyone's asking, well, how do you, how do you put these together? How do you do this? So um, at spellbinderspaperarts.com, um, actually, if you go to their YouTube channel, you're going to find the lovely Robin, who's made a zillion of these baskets and bowls, um, who's a very talented um, artist, and she does beautiful crochet work. She's going to show you how to do the crochet um, edge, how to piece these together using crochet. A little out of my skill set. I know how to crochet. I remember my mom taught me when I was little and I still can remember the basic stitching and I can put one together using crochet. But it's a little bit, um, I don't know, a little challenging for me for some reason, although I love the way it looks. One of the big differences I find between, um, besides just the way it looks, between using just a blanket stitch like this and doing full crochet is when you do a blanket stitch, you have to go ahead and measure out your yarn or your string. When you're doing crochet, you just keep going from the ball or the skein, right? So you just keep going until you're done and then you clip. When you're doing um, saddle stitch or the um, blanket stitch, you know, you're threading a needle and you kind of have to do your best guesstimate on how much you're gonna need. And usually after you do one panel, you know either you ran short or you ran long. So um, my rule of thumb is I always start with it like, you know, I take a piece of thread in my finger and I stretch it all the way. I stretch my arms out as far as they can go and I start with that. And that would be a one stitch blanket stitch. So let me just show you what I mean by blanket stitching if you're not familiar with it. This is a blanket stitch. I'm going to show you how to do that. That is just a one per hole. This is a two per hole. So I've gone into the hole twice, doing the same exact thing. And this is a three per hole. So the more I go into that hole, the more it kind of turns out looking a little bit more like a crochet stitch. So I'm gonna show you how I start um, crocheting, how, how I put these together. Um, so I'm gonna start with my panel. I, I already decide what I'm gonna use for the panels for the sides of my basket. And I'm gonna just show you, uh, one of the things I really like to use is um, Manila Folder. It's a really, it's a good card weight. It's inexpensive if you can, thrift stores, office supply, right? And I'll take it and I'll either do something where I'll have already my um, pieces that I wanna use already cut out as well. I'll just give it a little, little bit of that and I'll align them hole to hole. So like that might be my outside one. How cute would this be with um, your kids' pictures? I was thinking also, you know how we collected, well, I say collected, it depends on how old your children are, but maybe you're still collecting their artwork. This would be a really fun way to cut their artwork down instead of saving it and make something fun um, with their art, right? You could make a little paneled bowl using their artwork like a big, take a, a big piece of abstract art that they've made and um, cut it into the panels. So I can do that where I can, you know, piece all my little pieces together like that, my fronts and my backs and make my bowl. Or I can do something like this. I like to do collage. So I might take a piece of um, manila folder and I'll just go ahead and lay the die down and I'll trace around it with a pencil. So I'll have a, a line of, uh, you can tell, let me show you this. So this is the outside of the die. And then if you see that shiny line right there, that's the actual cut. So there's a little bit of space between the two. So this won't actually be the cut line. The cut line will be just inside. So I like to have a good section around it, but I just want to know um, where to start doing my collage work. 
And then I'll dig around with my bits and scraps and stuff and I'll cut, you know, glue stick, whatever. And then I'll make a collage like that. You know, keeping within the, um, I'll go, I'll go outside the lines with the collage so it overlaps, but keeping within, I don't have to waste too much collage scrap. And then on the back side, um, I'll just kind of glue on a piece of decorative paper. So this, uh, I'm going to have this as the inside of the bowl and that's the outside of the bowl. And then I'm going to take it over and put it in and sandwich it into my spell binders between the acrylic sheets like that. And then I'm going to run it through. Oh. Kind of missed the most important part. Let's do that again. I guess I should put this on there. If you find when you're lining up your um, die, you can use a little bit of masking tape, washi tape. Spellbinders has this really great um, yellow tape. It, it's skipping me exactly what they call that, but I love using that if I'm having trouble keeping this aligned. But um, I have faith this one's gonna sandwich just fine. So I'm gonna stick it in there, crank it through. I've, I've put a lot of stuff through here and I'm like, if I can't turn the crank, then it's just too much. But if I can turn the crank, even if I hear that funny noise, um, I'm going to be fine. Get this out of the way. So you're going to have this. Now, one of the things um, with this particular die is you're gonna have a lot of these holes. Can you see all the little holes? And some of them will punch out, some of them won't punch out. Some of them will get stuck in your, um, in your die itself. You can see some there. So you're definitely gonna be, have to be prepared to, to poke a lot of these out. What's really cool is the fact that this is a deep etched die and you can do so many layers at once so you're not having to punch holes out of so many layers. You can punch through all the layers at once. So what I do is um, I get a thumbtack. Where's my thumbtack? I have a bowl. And I just poke through like this. So instead of being annoyed by this process, I actually find it to be a little bit mindful. Um, there, all mine are poked out. I'll go back and make sure they all get poked out of here. So then yesterday when I was poking, I thought, oh, well, here's an opportunity to craft something. And I found a hat pin and I added a bunch of beads to it. So I made my own little poker. Spellbinders has a really cool uh, tool um, that has, it's got all the different gadgets on it, but at the very end it has a very nice poker. I'll leave a link to that um, down below. It's a, it's a really cool tool if you do a lot of um, die cutting. But at the end of it, it does have a poker. But um, I wanted something kind of fun and just to throw into my bowl so I can just poke out all my little guys like this and go around. All right, so they all come out. So prepare yourself to poke a lot of holes. That's okay. It's going to be fun. So now you've got um, you've got your, your panels that you want to put together. So this is the idea of where you're going to sandwich all your art together and then cut it versus cutting up a bunch of different things and then putting them together. So you can do this either way, right? As long as they're kind of tacked together so they don't make a, you know, you want all your holes aligned to make things easier. So I'm gonna show you how I start a basic um, bowl with a basic blanket stitch. So I've got some of this, um, it's like an embroidery floss because I don't do a lot of embroidery. I can't tell you exactly what this is called. But here's an, it's a DMC. It's kind of like, looks like a little bit of a rope. Um, I don't know if 5G means anything. I find this stuff at the thrift store. There's a dollar sticker on it. So I had a bunch of different colors. And um, again, if you watch the video from ye uh, yesterday, the one I just posted uh, previous to this one, you're going to see all the different uh, ways and things that I use. Like uh, here's one that's like a crochet thread that has some metallic to it. And this is just a three stitch. Um, blanket stitch. Okay, so this is how I start. I pick a hole, not at the corner. I pick a hole about either center or just off center, and I um, I just go through it. 
And I'm gonna leave about, oh, maybe three or four inches at the end. And I'm just gonna tie a basic single little knot like that. So then I'm gonna start, every uh, stitch is gonna come up through the bottom. And I'm holding this like this where it's, I'm holding it like a, a dish, like I'm, I'm handing somebody a plate of food. So I'm gonna hold it like that. So fingers underneath and I go, this is just how I do it. You're gonna find people do it a lot of different ways. It's a basic stitch and there's a lot of ways to do it, but I, I tend to do this be, this way because it's the least amount of steps needed. So I stick it up through and see how I'm holding it, the needle with my two fingers here so it just stays. And while it's there, I just lay that over the top. So just to show you again, this is tied in a knot. This just comes up through. I kind of catch it with my fingers and I lay that over the top. And then I pull. You'll find sometimes people will go ahead and do this where they'll go all the way through and then they'll catch it and then do this. But to me, that's just moving your arm twice, but um, you know, like pulling away and I'm like, ah, I'd rather do it the short way this way. So uh, I'm gonna do two like that in every single hole. At the corners, I'm gonna do more because I want um, to cover the whole corner. So I'm gonna call this a hard corner and that a soft corner. In other words, this takes a nice sharp turn. This one is a little bit more gentle. So I'll probably, I'll say maybe do one, two, three, four, five. So I'll do two stitches, one here, and then two stitches, and then continue with my two all the way. So it'll be like this. It goes really pretty fast. This is really fun to do. Um, I do it a lot uh, in front of the television, um, listening to documentaries, something I don't have to always look up to see, something I can just kind of listen to. I'll turn the corner. So that happens because I get crazy and go a little bit too fast. Um, if you start catching up like that and getting loops, just stop immediately. Don't pull hard. It's very easy to untangle those little loops that get knotted up. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then I'll just start over again here with the twos. So I'm gonna continue doing that all the way down. I might do, I might do five here, I might do four. Um, you kind of decide for yourself that the thing to remember doing this, um, this, this project is it's however you want to do it. And in fact, some of the worst, um, stitch jobs I've done, like they all come out in the wall, it all comes out in the end really looking nice. So don't get too hung up on your stitching, like, you know, try to keep it tidy. But sometimes you're like, if you go back, you say, oh my gosh, I did three there by accident. Like you're never going to see that again. You're never going to notice that just enjoy this process and don't get too crazy about how nice and tight this is or get crazy and make it super tight. I mean, it kind of depends on your crafting style, right? So again, I would just keep going around the, the whole thing. Um, and I'm going to come back. I'm not going to do this right now, but I'm, I would come back to this area, right? To where I started. So that's going to look a lot like, here's one that I almost finished like this. So I'll keep going to the end. So now I've already got one stitch in there because it's the one with the knot. I'm just going to make my other one. If I was doing three in the holes, I might I'd add two more here, but I'm just going to add the one more. I'm going to keep my needle on and I'm just going to tie this together in a little double knot. And depending on how tough your string is, is how hard you pull, but I've been known to break string pulling too hard. So I've got that knotted. So here's what you do with the ends that are hanging. Some will show, if you go on uh, YouTube and you search out greeting card bowls or greeting card baskets, you're going to find um, old school, how, how they're doing it uh, with the punching by hand of the cards and stuff. But then when you get forward into how they're stitching it, you're going to find a lot of people end up leaving these and using them um, down the line when they're assembling the whole bowl. Um, I like all mine put away and having no strings. So that, that's just my style. 
So this one seems to be going this way. So what I'm gonna do is I just go in, let's see if I can show you that. Here's the string I'm gonna be using. I'm just gonna try to hide it behind some of the stitching like that. So I kind of tucked it away. And even if you can see it right here, it, that's gonna get hidden uh, when we assemble the basket. So I'm gonna do that. I'll take off my needle. Um, the needle that I'm using, this is just a tapestry needle because it has a nice wide eye and then it's it's got a dull end on it. Um, this one is a clover gold eye tapestry needle. But let's see, I have another needle around here. You'll find, I thrift a lot. So, I mean, I'll find um, all kinds of different needles. This one has a huge eye. That might be good for a thicker thread. Um, but I do like the blunt nose ones. I think um, there's some different needles out there that are blunt. And then you're just going to thread your, I don't <laughs> I use my teeth to, to kind of wet and smash that and stick it through the needle. Um, here's a tip. If you're having trouble and you didn't get, you didn't grab your uh, needle threader, and you're having trouble pushing it through a hole like like that. Turn the needle around because sometimes needles are stamped. That hole is stamped out, and so the grooves kind of tend to go one way uh, smooth, and the other way is a little bit of a snag. Okay, so I already went that way. So this one, I'm just gonna head the other direction. Let's see. And I'm just gonna hide it under these. Like that. And then I'm gonna just snip those off. And there's my panel, ready to assemble. So I'm going to show you how I assemble these. I'll have also done the same thing with um, the hexagon. It looks like I did, this felt like more of a soft corner than a, a hard angle, so I did four stitches on that one. So what I'll do is I'll kind of lay out, if you have artwork or designs on them, you kind of want to lay out and decide where your, let's pretend that's been stitched, lay out where your things are, right? Like this. Okay, let's just pretend for the sake of the video that these are all stitched like that. So I'll lay this out and I'll say, okay, this is my inside. Um, and you know, this is the art that goes on the back side. It's all, all good to go. And then I'll, I'll pick up one like this. Um, let me thread my thing again. Oh, no, I have one threaded. Stand by. There we go. I did a blue so we can have some contrast. So for stitching up the sides, um, you're going to end up having to reload your needle a couple times. What you don't want to do is make it so long that you are stretching your arm to pull the needle through two and three times for every stitch, which I might have done on this one. So I'm going to cut that a little short. And I double it, but I, um, I leave one side longer than the other like that. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to bring this in. Um, let's see. It doesn't really matter. Let's see. How do I do it? I'm going to do it from the outside. So I'm going to start about, I'll start here on the very corner. And I just want to grab some of those corner pieces. Just kind of stick in there like that. Just into the thread section. And I always leave a long enough tail so that I can still use a needle and thread it back through like I did um, with the orange thread. So here's what I'm gonna, my plan is. I'm gonna stitch like this and connect these two. And then I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna go up here. Actually, let's do that again. I'm gonna do this. How about I just show you? I think that'll make more sense. This goes pretty fast. So see how these, um, not the stitched area, but this little piece that's on the very, very edge right there, that's what we're going to use to stitch through. So you're going to snag both of those. Go through like that.
Okay, so do you see what we're doing? If um, I were using orange thread here, this is virtually invisible, but I'm doing this just for the sake of contrast so you can see what's going on. Now I'm at the corner. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit, um, let's see if I can explain this, a little bit over to this side of the, each of those corners like that and just get, th get, get through some of that thread so my corners are kind of secure, secure. All right, lift that up. Add my next panel. And I'm going to stitch up and back down just the same way through that uh, the side side orange stitch there and you can hit a few at a time Well, I'm kind of rambling on this a little bit, so I might it might make it sound a little harder than this really is. This is stinking easy, um, especially if you if you've done a couple and you kind of like you get your groove. You're like, okay, next time I think I would do this on the corners. Okay, so that's all I'm doing is um, just sewing up the sides. I'm gonna get up there and make sure I, I clip the corners somewhere together. Give myself a little more thread, and then I'm gonna come back down the other way and crisscross. This is why having a blunt needle is so nice because you're not snagging the thread and accidentally going through strands of thread when you really want to go through the whole, you know, piece. All right, so now I'm back down. Because I don't have actual art on this demo piece, I, I'm kind of forgetting which is the front and the back, but um, I tend to like to stitch on the outside like that. So you can see now I have... Um, this connected to this goes up and down. I'm going to connect this, go up and down, connect to the bottom, go up and down, connect to the bottom. So this is how I'm going to do the routine of going around the basket. So I would go ahead and stitch through corners here. Just into the yarn. and then just continue down here doing that. So what's gonna happen is then you're gonna go th down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, until the bowl is finished. And then when you get back to the end, you're gonna have two pieces, your end thread, and you're just gonna tie them in a knot, and you're gonna thread them again back through and snip, and that's going to hide everything. So let's see if I can turn that over. So this is kind of how it's going to end up. This is just a one stitch. Um, this is one, I think this was my very, one of my very first bowls. So it's not super polished, but, um, and I was still kind of learning, you know, how to hide stitches, how to connect these and stuff. So um, in this case, I actually did the blanket stitch and stitched this to this with one blanket stitch versus blanket stitching the whole panel, blanking, blanket stitching the whole panel and then connecting them. I, I attempted to, just use the one blanket stitch to connect the two. So you can do that as well. It's still very structurally sound. I use these again all over the studio for everything. Um, I'm gonna, you know, throw all this in here and maybe take it in the house. And if I wanted to finish it, I put all my stuff in here and uh, head into the house and turn on a documentary and put my feet up, right? So I love these bowls so much. I hope you have fun making some um, yourself, making different kinds of projects, whether they're bowls or not. Again, check out my last YouTube video and be sure to go to spellbinderspaperarts.com to purchase these. And um, there's also gonna be other resellers online and um, they, you know, maybe they'll be in your local scrapbook stores too. 
Well, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you on the next video.